Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about scientific notation. Uh, as you can see, scientific notation is uh, an easier way, or a shorter way, really, to write really big or really small numbers. Now, there's two pieces to scientific notation, to writing a number in scientific notation. There's a first number, and then there's a second number. The first number is always between 1 and 10. It's always going to be between 1 and 10. Usually it's going to be a decimal. The second number always uses exponents with base 10. Okay, that probably doesn't mean much to you right now, but let me show you what I mean. Let's take this number here, 780 million. 780 million, okay? And let's look at how this is going to work. So. Again, we need our first number that's going to be between 1 and 10. Now, for this, here's what you do. We're going to cover up all the zeros at the end. We ignore all these ending zeros. They don't matter to us just yet. Instead, we're going to focus right on this first number. We've got 78, so we're going to go ahead and write 78. But remember, I said this number has to be between 1 and 10. How do we do that? We go ahead and we put in a decimal right there. Now instead of 78, we have 7.8, and that's between 1 and 10, so we're good to go. All right, then we write times 10. I told you the second number had to be an exponent <clears throat> with base 10. Well, here's our base 10. What exponent number goes here? To figure that out, all you do is look at our original number, look at the 7.8, and ask yourself, how many times did the decimal have to hop from the original number to get here? Let's count. Remember, in this original number, if you don't see a decimal, decimal's at the end. Okay, how many times did it hop to get between the 7 and the 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times it had to move. 8 is our exponent. 7.8 times 10 to the 8th power. That's how you write it. Let's look at another example. 7,231,000. Okay, again, for our first number, we ignore these zeros at the end. We write 7, 2, 3, 1. You've got to write all the numbers that you see up there, excluding the ending zeros. <clears throat> Again, where do we put the decimal in order to make it between 1 and 10? Got to put it right there. Okay? So then we write times 10 to what power? Well, let's see how, how many times the decimal hopped. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times the exponent is 6. 7.231 times 10 to the 6th power. That's how we write it. One final example here. 118 billion. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our 118 and the decimal right there. All right, times 10. Let's see how many times that decimal hopped. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. So 1.18 times 10 to the 11th power. All right. Now remember, this can work with really small numbers too. For example, here we have 0. 0.00000004. Okay? How do we do this with small numbers? Well, it's almost exactly the same. We ignore, and this time it's the beginning zeros that we're ignoring. We ignore all these beginning zeros. We put the number 4, just the number 4, times 10. And just like before, how many times did the decimal have to hop to get from here to here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. Now, the only difference is, since this was a small number, instead of putting 7 as the exponent, you're going to put negative 7. That's it. That's the only difference, and that's how we would write that. Look at the second example here. Ignore the front zeros. We've got 3.82 times 10. How many times did the decimal move? 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, it started off as a small number, so negative 4. Our exponent is negative 4. For this last one, we're going to put 1.31. Remember, this has to be between 1 and 10. So that's why we have 1.3, 3.8. This one was 4, so it was already good. Okay? We have 1.31. How many times did that decimal move? Just once. So times 
10 to the negative 1. All right? And that's how it works for small numbers. Now, why does this work the way it does? Okay, well, think about it. Let's just take a random number to start off with, 42.15. Think about what happens when you multiply a number just times 10. Okay? The digits don't change at all. The only thing that happens is the decimal hops, right? If you do this, you end up getting 42, I'm sorry, 421.5. The decimal just hopped one spot. If you took that same number and multiplied it instead by 100, well, the decimal hops two spots, right? You get 4215. If you multiplied it by 1,000, it would move three spots, okay? And the only reason we use exponents is, you know, once you get up to multiplying it by like a million, that gets too hard to write all of that out. So instead of saying that, we say 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We say 10 to the 6th power. You're multiplying it still by this. It's the same idea. We just write it as an exponent to make it shorter. Okay? So that's why this works. Now, we can also use this information to go in the other direction. We can say, okay, this number is written in scientific notation. What would it look like in standard form? <clears throat> okay, well, we've got 6.3. So somewhere in our answer is going to be the number 6.3. Okay? It says 6.3 times 10 to the negative fourth. Well, this negative fourth is a clue right off the bat that this is going to have to be a very small number since it's a negative fourth. Okay. Well, same thing. The four tells us the decimal moves four times. So if it started here and it needs to move four times to make this number smaller, here we go. One, two, add a zero, three, add a zero, four, add one more zero, and there's our decimal. Here's our answer in standard form. Let's just double check. It started as 6.3, and it needed to move four times. One, two, three, four. There it is. There's our answer. If you look at the second one down here, we had 7.912 times 10 to the sixth. Well, somewhere in our answer, we're going to need 7912. Now we just have to figure out which way the, the decimal is going to hop and how many times. This positive six tells us we're going to need to make this number bigger. So we're moving the decimal this way, and the 6 tells us we're hopping 6 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We've got to add in those zeros as placeholders, and let's just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is the number in standard form. Okay? And that is the whole lesson. Now, the only other thing you need to do is look down in the description. There is a link to a Google quiz, uh, and I just need, to an need you to answer just the one question on there as part of your homework to let me know that you watched this video. I'll see you in class tomorrow.